Hello, my name is Dan Humberg, um, and I'm representing HarvestFires.com. Uh, this is an instructional video to help with a modification to the tin kit on a fire stop system. In this case, for uh, a John Deere combine, uh, this will f this fix or solution will work on the John Deere model 9770 combine. It'll also work on a 9670 combine and it will work on the later or latest um, versions of the 9760 combine when they went to the engine with the uh, uh, exhaust gas recirculation and I, I, I am told that that is associated with the bullet rotor on the combine too. So 9760 late ones or 9670 or 9770 combine. Um, this uh, is not a full kit that I'm talking about. It's actually a kind of a um, modification of the normal tin kit. And so if you've got, if you're looking at this, you're probably considering the, I, I may have sent you a set of parts to to uh, consider putting this on the combine in place of some parts that are there in addition to some parts that are there. Um, this came about because I had one uh, customer, who I installed the system on his 9770, uh, and he contacted me and said initially he had no fires, no smolders on the machine, and then after a couple hundred acres, he started having smolders again on the machine, and that's not typical of this, so I wanted to know what happened there, what was going on. So I went and looked at the installation on that I'd done on that machine and the way that the tin parts fit, and I found a place where I believe we were getting um, air entering the enclosure, uh, air blast coming from the radiator fan, entering the enclosure and where that hole is or where that opening was is very very close to the turbocharger and so any dust that got through or got pushed in there uh, was available to the hottest part of the machine at the turbocharger so um, I've come up with three parts one is a replacement part and two additional parts uh, that are not very difficult to put on uh, hopefully you can do it by just removing the step that perforated step above the uh, engine itself and then access the um, wastegate control area of the turbocharger and you should be able to make this modification. So hopefully with minimum amount of uh, work and disassembly you could do this. Um, so I, I went to that subject machine that was experiencing, uh, still experiencing some smolders and I looked at it and tried to figure out where how to do this and I fit tin, uh, cut and fit tin to that one to fix that one. Um, and then I used the patterns that I made from those uh, on-site made tin pieces, brought them back and I entered them in the CAD system and tried to kind of make those a little more sophisticated using the CAD, the, the computer-aided design software, uh, and then generate files so that we can recreate those parts. Uh, and that, those are the parts I'm going to show you now. Um, However, I have not fit these CAD design parts on a machine. I don't have one that's really easily available to me as a model, but um, I compared these to the ones that I, the patterns are the ones that I put on the, the test machine and, and hopefully that these should work on there. I, having said that, you, there are some places I'll point out where you may have to trim because uh, I'd rather provide it where you have to trim a little bit off than uh, have the pieces be undersized in some way so that they don't cover up the parts that we want to cover. So this is really just to show you, I'm, I'm on the bench right now and I'm going to show you how to bend, how to fold the piece, three pieces that we get or that you'll get and then talk a little bit about how to install them on the machine. If you haven't already done so, you want to look at the um, YouTube video that talks about the CAD model for this same uh, modification. It will show the assembled tin uh, in the video format where I, the way I see it when I look at the assembly on the uh, computer-aided design software um, program and that'll help to visualize what it is we're going to do, uh, what it is you're, you're going to do to put these pieces on and where they go. But I'll talk through it here as well. So I'm going to get you looking down at the bench so you can see the three pieces and then I'll show you how to bend them, talk a little bit about how they go on the machine and then that'll hopefully get you through that process. All right, you're looking down at the my bench, the black surface of the bench, I've got three pieces of tin here. These are the flat pieces that I would ship you if I'm sending you uh, this uh, repair kit or substitution kit. The parts, is, parts have a part number cut into them. 
this one has the number D7 for Deer 70 series is really what that means to me, or 9770, one of those two. So D7, and then this one has an underscore and a 10 above the underscore. So it's part number 10. There is a part number 10 on your kit already, and it, it is in the same area that this one's going to replace. So that part is a multi-band part that fits into the wastegate actuator box on the on the uh, rear side of the turbocharger. And so you can actually take that part number 10 off of the, the uh, existing box. There are six screw holes in that uh, part number 10 on there that will hold it onto the back side of the vertical panel on the enclosure. And so you probably need to uncover, if you have tape over them, you need to uncover those screws, pull those six screws and take that part off. So that's the part we're looking at is D7 underscore 10. I'm going to look at it from my perspective here. So I'm reading the numbers correctly, right side up and everything right here on this large flange. And so in terms of how to bend it, we want that flange there on my left hand, your left hand, uh, so that you can read the, the part number there. From that point, I, I can tell you what we're going to do is bend this piece 90 degrees, that lar lar large flange with the six holes bends upward from the face 90 degrees. Now we have two more bends on each of these three flanges on the side, and they all kind of bend the same. Uh, I would probably bend the first, um, take that back, maybe I go into the back one and measure it, bend this one 90 degrees away from the face that we're looking at here. So you can probably do it with your hands, it doesn't hurt to use a pliers or a sheet metal tool like that one or this one. Having bent that first one, I'll use the smaller pliers. Take the second flange and I'm going to continue to bend that around underneath. So I bend that up and it should or bend it around underneath. So it, if this is vertical, looking, you're looking right down on this vertical panel, we're going to bring this one back up pretty much vertical. I'm going to do the same thing on the top here. This flange, I'll bend it first in close like this, 90 degrees away from, the, from this large base. And the second flange, I'll bend down 90 degrees, and it will kind of line up with the, the, this one on the bottom. That's kind of the plan anyway. And now these are going to do exactly the same thing on this outer end. They're just smaller flanges. So the first one, bend it 90 degrees away, and the last one, 90 degrees. You might have to do that by hand. 90 degrees back around. Okay, so we have this odd looking piece here. What are you going to do with it? Well, on the back side of the turbocharger on the 70s, on that engine, there is a cast iron support bracket that holds the wastegate actuator for the turbocharger. And that cast iron piece is about the oddest shaped piece of cast iron you could imagine. Anyway, it, but it is bolted to the turbocharger on the side and sticks back and tapers down. And then it, on the side of it here, it has the uh, wastegate um, actuator, the box, the control box that does that. And when I look at this, I'm thinking, I already made, might have made a mistake on this. This first flange may not be a 90 degree bend. That may actually be about probably 65 degrees or 70 degrees like I've got it here, but that's easy to adjust on the machine. Now, with this bent that way, this will slip. The idea is that it slips onto that wastegate actuator cast iron frame from the back. Uh, I'm at the back of the combine, you're in the grain tank or over the top of the engine, I guess. So we're going to slide this over that cast iron bracket and these flanges, this one, this one, and this one, 
will go down in between that cast iron bracket and the actual control box that fits right where my hand is here. There's a little bit of a space in between. There's like a bolt, uh, the width of a small nut or something in between there. And these flanges, these three flanges, will fit down in that gap in there and help position this and hold it in place. And it may be that it, that that you may need to trim on these flanges a little bit. I, I, they should be designed so that they fit uh, up against or just clear the bolts that connect those things like here and here and back in these corners. But it is possible that it, to fit that on there you may need to trim. And it wouldn't hurt to trim if you have to. Don't do it if you don't have to. But if you have to it wouldn't hurt to trim on this flange. It's just that the farther we get in there the tighter up I think this will uh, seal that area. These six holes go up against the six holes on the vertical flange on the back wall or the vertical wall on the back of the enclosure that we've built around the turbocharger. So the, the turbo, it's the exhaust turbine itself would be right here and the compressor turbine is right over here. And this will go up against that vertical wall and slip over that, bra that cast iron bracket. This little tab here later, we may bend that down, but not, not yet. We'll do that in place. So the goal is that this fits around all of those, uh, that complicated shape, separates the cast iron support bracket from the turbocharger um, wastegate actuator control box, which is kind of about a, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a roughly square box here that is maybe three inches deep and four by four. It's in this space right here. So this will slip over that. These will fit in. These flanges will fit around this one around the back side and this down from the top and this up from the bottom in the space between those two components. And then at the six, you use the top four screws to screw it onto that vertical wall. So that's step one. The second piece is this kind of L-shaped chunk. It says D719. It's a new part. We're looking at it here. I'm looking where I can read that number and I'm going to take the flange that the, the part number is printed on. I'm going to bend it away from me 90 degrees. If I did that correctly, I could be wrong because I've forgotten a little bit about how I did that in the CAD model, but I think that's correct. And this piece is going to slide in between an existing piece and and the, the where the uh, compressor turbine is here. It'll slide down, not quite vertically, but back in here. And it may it may actually overlap right here, and come into that that space. I'm not sure how exactly where it ends up there, but it, it, it'll it slide down in place and wedge itself in there. There is a screw hole on the top here, um, and there's a screw hole at the bottom. The one on the bottom is going to ultimately line up with this piece, so that one we should find there. I'm not sure exactly what this one hits up here, whether there's going to be a hole there for that. This is the outer, the larger uh, the larger pilot hole, which means the screw goes through this first and then it goes into the next part. I'm not sure if there's a screw hole in the next part or if that piece is existing on your machine. You may need to shoot the screw through since they're self-drilling, self-tapping screws. So you may need to shoot that one through once it's in place. So that one has a single bend on it. That's all it takes. The third part is part D718. That one actually has no bends in it at all. It does have a slot here, a hole that will accommodate uh, an oil line. That's the pressure line to the turbocharger bearing that comes in from the back and dives down underneath the compressor turbine. So if we have this piece um, vertically here, I'm going to I'm going to turn this up up like this. So let's assume that the bench is the vertical wall of my enclosure and this goes up against it. The turbo is behind it here and here's that wastegate actuator uh, 
casting and the wastegate actuator control box is over here and we have pre now screwed on four screws here to attach this to the vertical wall this piece is going to fit underneath here slide in place and overlap those two screw holes and you're going to screw through those two and into that same vertical wall now there's something a little funky in this in the CAD model that generated these this piece I think you're going to need to trim um, right now it it won't fit there without interfering with the tip of this piece it's also possible that you that if this fits in there you could trim this the tip of this off or bend it if necessary but so that this is going to overlap and this should be pretty much flat just like on this surface it should line up there but right now it's got some interference you can see that wants to poke through there and that's not right um, but I, I haven't, I couldn't quite resolve that between the, the patterns of the parts that I traced and exactly where the fudge came in on the one that I installed. So I, I made it large, and you can trim this if necessary to fit. But what this is going to do is it's going to slide underneath here, and it's going to tighten up the space or close up the space underneath this bracket and underneath the wastegate actuator control box that's there. Um, and to keep air from escaping at that point. So if you test fit it, don't cut it until you test fit it, but see whether you can get this to go in there and then you either need to trim off this one a little bit or you could possibly also bend the tip of this down so that this would slide in behind it on there. And then this will slide in and this actually fits this fact actually fits right down to the head of the engine. That's, that's this bottom here. There's a, there's a little drop, I think, in the, in the profile of the cover over the valve cover on the head of the engine. And this part you'll have to split apart and slide around the oil line. That line is going gonna, is gonna, to, that line's going to dive down through this and go underneath the, the compressor turbine over in that direction. But this will allow you to make a relatively tight fit around that oil line. Now you want to make sure that you don't have hard contact between this and the oil line. So either bend the oil line slightly, it's, it's malleable and it's quite a ways from where it's got to go. So you can bend that a little bit if necessary. Or you can use a pliers and you can bend this line, the edge of this, in or out. In this case the line is going to go, going to come up like this. So if I was going to do that, I would probably bend these either out or in a little bit so that they parallel that. And so that if my finger was the oil line, I'd have smooth contact from this piece of tin against my finger and not this relatively hard, sharp edge. It's not really sharp because the laser doesn't cut it sharp, but it is quite hard and rough. So make sure you don't have rough contact or hard contact between the tin and the oil line. We don't want that to vibrate and cut through the oil line. So those are the pieces. This one will fit on underneath here or on top of this. And again, you're going to have to manage that interference here to make that fit. And then once that one's in place and this other one slides down, this one is going to slide down like this, overlap just like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there's a hole right down here by my thumb that overlaps and that's going to screw together like that when that piece is in the right spot. You can also look at the CAD model. Hopefully it shows the orientation of these three pieces. Now once you have them on, you're going to use some of that. Uh, well, once you have that this one on and the others fit in place that you know they fit, this tab may wrap, may bend down 90 or even a little more than 90 degrees to tie this piece to, a, to, to another piece that's right up here and lock them together or help lock them together and close up a little gap there. Then once this is in place, I look this over real good and you've got some of that aluminum foil tape that I would have shipped with the kit. If you don't have it and you need it, you can contact me or you can buy it at a hardware store or a Menards or a, any place that sells 
uh, plumbing, heating stuff, they'll sell this aluminum foil tape. Uh, but I ship it with a kit, so you probably have some of it yet if you've got one of these kits. Take some of the aluminum foil tape in any place that you have gaps around this thing where it joins the rest of the tin, uh, where it contacts the, uh, the, the rest of the framing and stuff here, the, the pieces of this wastegate actuator, maybe right back around these corners. I would use that aluminum foil tin and box that in tight. Tighten this up. I really don't want air leaving through here if possible. I just really want it as tight as possible. It's not so much that we can't lose any air. We do need to lose air, but I don't want to lose it close to the turbo here. We want it to flow around that turbocharger, uh, the exhaust turbine, and keep that as, uh, as cool as possible. Not so much cool, but keep it from getting dust at it. And the concept is not so much that we're cooling the exhaust system, but if we can keep the, system, the box tight enough, when we force air into it, that air has to go somewhere, and so it finds the, the few gaps that we do have, the openings, and it'll filter out through those. But what I think was happening on the machine that, we, that we're trying to fix is that there was a kind of a, a substantial gap in the tin between the existing parts right about where my fingers are here. And the radiator fan is blowing real hard right this direction, and the exhaust turbine is right back here. And so we were getting some air with dust in it being forced in, and we had a big enough holes here that we were probably losing air pressure because we were leaking air out in places that was kind of a short circuit from where the air comes in, and it could turn, out, turn around and leak out here. And so that means we don't have much air pressure inside there, and so the air blowing from the radiator fan could force some air and dust in through the gaps that were, exist around here. And you do not want that because the exhaust turbine is right there, and it will ignite that dust. So button this thing up as tight as you can in this part of the enclosure with the tape. I, I point out some other locations on the video of the CAD model where I suggest you tighten it up with tape if you haven't already got those areas tight. But it, won't have, it won't be a problem to tighten the box really tight. If you do, uh, the air will filter out in places where it can leak out and preferably down like on the bottom of the manifold cover. Uh, that, that would be a good place to lose it. It forces the air to dive down and get that down to the exhaust manifold and go out the openings on the bottom of that where we've created some deliberately for that. Here I do not want to lose air. I want it, want it to be pressurized inside and not allow any dust in. So if you have a 9770 and, and uh, are having any issues and you don't have this kit, you can certainly contact me. Uh, if I'm sending you the kit, it means that I, I you purchased a kit recently, and I don't want you to uh, risk having fires on that combine, and so I suggest you do this update to that kit. Um, so three parts, D10 to replace D10 on the existing kit, D18 underneath that, D19 slips in down from above, right behind the compressor turbine. Um, this flange should kind of overlap the the radiator fan side of the compressor turbine, and it, it'll have a curved shape and kind of dive down in this corner here. So those are the three parts to update the 9770-10. If you have any, if you struggle with it or have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, I can be, you can contact me by email at, it's harvestfires at outlook.com. So I want you to, if you get these kit pieces, the only thing you have to do to put it on is to take that perforated step off above the engine head and it will give you access to this area and you can put this, uh, these three pieces in place, screw them on, button them down with tape, cover these uh, joints with a, half a strip of tape or whatever so we don't leak a lot of air out in this area through those as well. You can also button up where the oil line goes through here and tighten that up with tape if possible so that you don't lose air there. And then we should be pretty tight in this part of the machine and hopefully it can go through the entire sunflower harvest without even smelling hot on the machine. So that's the kit for the, the patch kit for a John Deere 9770, 9670 and the latest ones of the 9760 combines. Have a safe harvest.